We've now got the ability to take a user's email and password from our form. We did this by two, creating two inputs for the email and the password. So now at any single point in time inside this component, whenever we want to, we can refer to this.state.email and this.state.password to get the email and password that the user entered. So I think that we're now ready to use that email and password to attempt to log our user in. Now we only want to attempt to use the logger in to log in to, well, we only want to log them in when they tap on our button. And if you recall, we deal with taps on buttons by adding a callback function to the button tags on press prop. So whenever the user taps a button, our callback function will be called. So that is going to be our opportunity to log the user in. So with that in mind, we will add in a callback to our button tag, and then inside the callback, we will attempt to log in the user. That's the goal here. So first, we will define our on press prop, and then we will give it a callback function. I'm going to define it as a helper method on side on this uh, component login form. So I'll say this dot on button press. And because we are passing this thing a callback function, because this is a function that will be called at some point in the future, I'm going to bind the context to this. Okay. So now we will define on button press. I'm going to scroll back up to the top and add another helper method method called on button press. So inside of here, this is it. This is our point in time to actually log the user in. This is where we want to try to authenticate our user. To authenticate our user, we will import the Firebase framework, and then we will use a method off of Firebase to sign the user in. So at the top, I'm going to import Firebase from Firebase. And then I'll use a method on that Firebase object to authenticate our user. We'll call firebase.auth.signin with email and password. And then we need to pass this function our email and password. Well, remember, the email and the password is available on our state object. So we just have to refer to this.state.email and this.state.password. Because we want two properties off the same object, we're going to use a little bit of destructuring just to clean up our code. So we'll reference const email and password from this.state. So now we've got access to the email and pa password variables within this function. So we'll pass them to this method. So in short, sign my user in with an email and password, and here's the email and the password right here. Okay, let's pull up a diagram really quick to you know, kind of figure out where we are. Like, hey, is it is, is signing user in just this easy? I mean, this seems really easy, right? Uh, well, maybe it's as easy, maybe it's a little bit harder. So let me pull up a diagram really quick here, if I can find it. Here we go. All right, so of course, signing in a user isn't as easy as you might think. The code that we just put in, yeah, it is correct. It's how we initiate signing in a user, but now we've got a lot of stuff to do on top of this. So this is a diagram of all the different cases that can occur from attempting to sign a user in. So we start off here at the top with our sign in attempt. When we attempt to sign in a user with an email and password, there's two possible outcomes for it from that. Either they entered a uh, correct email and password, so like, you know, correct credentials, and boom, now that was a successful authentication and we can happily say, all right, user, you are now logged in. You have access to all the resources within this app. On the flip side, if they enter an incorrect email and password, we need to figure out why. So did the user enter in an email that did not exist? If they, did, if they entered an email that did not exist, maybe we want to try to create an account for them. Because remember, we don't have a distinct separate flow for sign up. We've just got this one screen that's gonna handle both the sign in and the sign up case. So if a user attempts to sign in and that sign in request fails, we will immediately attempt to create the user an, an account. Now, if, they, uh, if we try to create the account and it's successful, fantastic, we're all done. The user, again, is signed in, we're happy. But if the user tries to create the account and that request fails, then we want to show the user an error, something that says, hey, you either 
try to create an account using email that already exists in the system, or you entered an incorrect email and password combination. So this is the flow that we have to accommodate now throughout this sign-in process. So an user, again, taps on the button, either they succeed or fail. If they fail, we'll try to create them account. If they succeed with that, fantastic. But if they fail, then we need to show them an error that says basically the entire authentication flow failed. You need to try a different email or a different password. So let's continue in the next section and handle implementing this case.